Hi everyone, I'm Melissa with the Midnight Hour Oil. I'm kind of fighting some kind of a bug here, so please excuse the cough drop while I'm talking. <clears throat> but I wanted to come out today and share with you something that's pretty sobering. Uh, back on February 6th, I shared a dream that I had been given. And in the dream, I was shown uh, this train that had gone under the river and then it came up like a beast. And I, I felt like this this train was symbolic of the fallen angels and them emerging from under the earth from the chains where they had been bound. And so over this past week, there have been a couple people who uh, <clears throat> have had very similar dreams and that where they're being shown that the fallen ones are coming down to the earth, that we are in a time uh, when they are going to return or are returning right now and I'm just going to share I'm going to read the one dream uh, somebody sent me and <clears throat> in this dream he writes I saw myself standing still looking upwards aware of the presence of the Lord right next to me as I looked up towards the sky fixing my gaze on what looked like a fast approaching bus leaving a trail of cloud behind it I told the Lord that is the angel of death. And so it was. It was driving the flying black bus I saw that I recognized and knew what that God was watching standing right beside me. The angel of death bus did a grand entrance <clears throat> U-turn in the air before neatly landing about 1.5 meters from where the Lord and I were standing. Up close before the bus touched ground, Though the bus looked empty, I remember gasping and saying to the Lord, OMG, it is infested as in jam-packed with fallen angels. For the first time, I got to see the color of the bus. It was the blackest of black ever seen. As the bus stopped and its passengers prepared to alight, the first fallen angel stepped out of the bus, aimed and shot its deadly weapon at me. And the fallen angel, as the fallen angel shot the, shot, the Lord allowed me to see what the angel looked like. The eye of the Lord, the Holy Ghost, sees like unto an x-ray, piercing through skin, epidermis, bones, marrow, sinews, literally. Another thing I suddenly realized after the fallen angel had shot at me was its height, incredibly tall, beyond belief. When the weapon hit me, I immediately re realized that I had the whole armor of God on me. On impact, the fallen angel's weapon literally melted away. As it hit the shield of faith, which felt like the fallen angel's weapon had a shield that had substance. It was an awesome, wondrous, yet somehow terrifying thing to behold and experience. Later on, I realized that human beings are no match to fallen angels, and fallen angels are truly no match to the one true living God, the Lord strong and mighty. Amen. So the individual who shared that often will send prayer requests, and <clears throat> anyway, he shared this dream with me and, and a few others that he has in a email group. And about a day or two later, I received an email about a dream that Joni Stahl had been given, which was very similar to this dream. And she comes out on a video, uh, March 4th, she shared the dream in a YouTube video. She has a YouTube channel. I'm going to provide a link to that video so you can listen to her dream. But in a nutshell, she's being shown the same thing, this darkness descending from the sky. And she sees Satan, and, and she can even feel the, the presence of the evil, even after she wakes up from the dream. So she was being shown the same thing. So these demonic, satanic, fallen ones are returning. Now, this is something that Jesus prophesied uh, in his word. If you go to Matthew chapter 24 and read verses 33 through 39 or Luke chapter 17 verses 26 through 23, you'll see where Jesus told us that in the end times that it was going to be just as in the days of Noah. Very specifically in Matthew chapter 24 verse 36, uh, rather verse 37. Jesus said, for the coming of the Son of Man will be just like the days of Noah. When you think of the days of Noah, there's one thing that really stands out, and that is that there were many hybrid beings, Nephilim. But not only that, there were fallen angels on the earth. The fallen angels literally asked Enoch to intercede for them. And 
This is all in the Book of Enoch, which the Book of Enoch had been canonized at one time. It was removed from the canon, canon about 1100 or 1200 AD, more than likely because the enemy did not want us to understand what to look for during the end times. So anyway, uh, in the Book of Enoch, it explains how these fallen angels, the 200 watchers, were looking for mercy. And when Enoch approached the Lord about this, the Lord told Enoch, that there would be no mercy. They were going to be judged. And many of them were bound under the earth. The earth was filled with violence. And we see a lot of violence emerging today. But <clears throat> with the arrival of these fallen ones, I believe we're going to see even more violence. And from the, the one dream the man was given where it was the angel of death driving this bus, the purpose of these angels is obviously to bring about death upon the earth. But the whole point is, to be prepared for the, the things that are coming on the earth, which the, the level of violence has increased exponentially. And it's it sickens me to see some of the videos that are on Fox News. Uh, every once in a while, I'll see my husband watches it throughout the day, typically while he's working. And I'll see a glimpse of some assault that took place, some senseless assault on an innocent person, just somebody randomly beating them up. It, it sickens me. In John 15, 5, Jesus said that I'm the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And folks, that's the key for us to remember. Apart from Christ, we are helpless. We can do nothing. And sometimes I think we forget that and we want to pursue our our goals and our dreams and even ministries and and we we forget that without Jesus we can do nothing and anything we are trying to accomplish outside of Christ it's just sinking sand and if we will remain in Christ if we will continue like Paul to remember that we are weak but he is strong and with him all things are possible with God all things are possible but we have to come to him daily and re recognize our own weaknesses and ask him to make his power perfect in our weaknesses. And if we will do that, if we will remain hidden in Christ during these dark times, I truly believe that we will be preserved, that we will be kept uh, until that day. Not to say that nobody's going to suffer and nobody's going to go through any kind of per uh, persecution because I believe that's on the horizon and it's increasing. And at the same time that we remain hidden in Christ church, it's important for us to uh, continue to armor up daily, just like the man in that dream who was sharing how he had the shield of faith in place. And when that fallen angel shot the arrow or shot that weapon at him, it melted away. If we remain armored up with all of the spiritual armor in place, that is going to make a difference in how we are going to come out of these battles. Uh, the shield of faith, remembering to put our hope in the word of God. We, it's not enough just to know the word of God. We have to believe it. We have to believe it and we have to remain hopeful in it. Just like in that parable in that last video I was talking about where Jesus was telling the people about a, a, an unjust king who gave a woman justice because she just kept coming to him over and over. How much more will our heavenly father give us justice in the right time when the day comes? And so we have to remember to believe that, that even though it looks sometimes like the evil around us is, is, is winning, that the evil around us is prospering and we feel like we are crumbling, we have to remember God is a just God and in his perfect time, in his perfect way, he's going to bring forth justice. But if we, if we lose heart and we forget that and we uh, begin to look around us at all the, the horrible things happening, it's easy, it will be easy for the enemy to cause us to even turn away from the Lord in thinking he's not just, he's not doing right by us. Uh, but we have to remember just because we're suffering doesn't mean that God isn't good. Suffering is a part of being in this fallen, sin-infested world. A lot of times you don't hear this from the pulpit, but the truth remains, church, that every disciple was martyred with the exception of John. Every one of them paid for their faith 
with their own lives. And, and it's not to say none of us will. Some of us may very well be called upon to do that before the rapture. I believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. You know that. But at the same time, I believe that the church has been persecuted for the past 2,000 years and that that persecution is going to increase until the time that the church is removed. But we have to walk in the faith that no matter what happens to us, that in his perfect time, in his perfect way, God is going to balance the scales, okay? That he will make all things right and that nobody is getting away with anything. But we are here right now to be the light, all right? To let our light shine before men so that they can see our good deeds and give glory to our Heavenly Father and be drawn to the Lord Jesus through the light that we emanate in this darkness. We have to remain sober-minded, church. These beings that are coming down onto the earth right now, we haven't faced in this generation, we have not faced this level of evil. And I believe that is exactly why the Lord last year has been sh was showing me in a couple dreams and a vision that I was being hidden, that he is hiding us, okay? Because when you are facing an opponent that is beyond your ability to, to fight against, you hide, all right? And, and Jesus is our hiding place. And if we will remain hidden in him and stay focused on, on what he's doing and, and not let ourselves get off track, I believe we're going to be okay. So I, I hope, I pray that this message bears witness with your spirit. Again, I'm going to put a link to Joni's video in the description box. Look for that. Uh, and, and just stay hidden in Christ church. Just stay hidden in him in that secret place of his presence. As always, it is my prayer that we will all continue to keep our lamps burning bright while we wait for Jesus. I love you all. God bless you.